I think it's fair to say for most FPL managers that game week four was one to forget. I'm down now to 200k overall, and here are my transfer plans for game week five. By the way, if anyone wondering what the hell was happening with my face, I got brutally attacked by a puppy this weekend. So uh, yeah, apologies for that. Hope you can see past it. I thought I'd make a video regardless. So I thought I'd start things just by showing the state of my team as it is at the moment. I scored 51 points. I was 110k overall last week. Actually got up to, on Saturday evening and after the Saturday games, I was up to 90k overall. And then with the Arsenal clean sheet and me owning Solanke, and two of my Newcastle players blanking it just killed me, basically. And I'm down to a 200k rank. Now, I'm very well aware that's still pretty good for this stage of the season. And I'm definitely grateful for the luck that I've had in the game to, to be there so far. So, yeah, I'm, I'm well aware I'm, I'm doing all right. So, try not to get too, too downhearted by my little red arrow this week. Goalkeeper in Dean Henderson. Just really disappointing. Talk about him later on. I've got a potential replacement for him. I'll talk about how many transfers I've got, etc. in a second. Robinson, Guardiola and Colwell. I think Robinson is fine. He could have got a clean sheet in that game. It's so unfortunate that it ended so late for him. Guardiola, really disappointing there. Didn't start the game. Yeah, I'm, I think I've just about had enough of him now. It's not like he's a four and a half million defender that's a bit of a rotation risk like Lewis, for example. You know, he's six million and I don't want to be spending six million on a defender that's not getting clean sheets, not getting attacking returns and not starting. I think he's a transfer out this week and I've got some plans for who I'm going to replace him with. Colwell, I'm really happy with the clean sheet I've got from him. I think that's kind of justified my transfer already and the couple of games that I've needed to start him, he's kept one clean sheet, so I'll take that. I'm fortunate really, well, I think the yellow card was deserved, but the referee in that Chelsea game has just given out yellow cards left, right and centre. So if you got a yellow card from, from that game, I'd consider yourself unlucky because I think he was being really harsh with how many he was given out. Three blanks in my midfield in Gordon, Eze and Salah. And then Smithrow who got an assist. I'm really pleased that I went for Smithrow at the start of the season. I think he's proved his value in my team already. Isaac unfortunately went off at half time with, well, I think he hurt his nose where he got sort of kicked in the, I think he got kicked in the face. I heard a rumour that basically they, they couldn't stop his nose bleeding and that's why he couldn't return for the second half. Hopefully that's something he can recover from quite quickly. I, th I think it's quite, you know, obviously unfortunate that he couldn't continue the game, but I don't think it's an injury that will keep him out for game week five. I mean, if you have a nosebleed, you probably recover from that in a week, right? So hopefully he's going to be back and ready to go for five. Haaland, just the absolute robot as my captain. Another brace for him. I was hoping it was going to be three hat tricks in a row, but wasn't to be the case. He's basically saved my game week. Got over half the points of my entire team, 26 points. Yeah, really happy with that. And then Solanke, I was quietly hopeful that Tottenham would do a number over Arsenal, given that they were missing Declan Rice and Odegaard. Unfortunately, that wasn't to be. And like I said, the Arsenal clean sheet in general has, has killed my team this week, basically, because I don't have any Arsenal defenders. I've seen a lot of people have Raya, Gabriel, Saliba, who obviously would have got some points. Gabriel absolutely killing it, and same with Raya. And that obviously meant Solanke didn't score. I, I think he had his chances in the game, though, and he definitely looked dangerous, so... You know, Arsenal is, well, still in my mind, probably the best defence in the league, at least over the last couple of years. So, you know, a blank against Arsenal isn't the worst thing in the world. And I would say he definitely didn't put up a stinker, right? It wasn't a disappointing performance where you want to immediately take him out of your team. So, yeah, not too worried about Solanke. I think I'm going to keep the faith. Pretty average game week, 51 points. Let me know in the comments what you scored. So here's how we're shaping up for next week then. I've actually got three free transfers, but I don't have anything in the bank. And I think over the last week or so, I've gotten, I've been hit quite hard with price changes. So Gordon's gone down, Eze's gone down, Isaac's gone down, and Lewis Hall has gone down. So direct replacements for those players are going to be quite hard to find. Like I can't replace Gordon with someone at 7.5 million, for example. Likewise, Lewis Hall, I can't do a like for like change for him. As a, you know, he's gone down a little bit, but I don't think I can justify taking him out. So, yeah, just go player by player, I guess. Dean Henderson, he's potentially on the chopping block for me. For me, I'm, I'm really hesitant to make goalkeeper transfers in FPL because they just never worked out for me. Um, yeah, I can't remember a time where I've changed my goalkeeper and it's actually benefited me. Usually, I find that, yeah, when I have a goalkeeper, 
I take them out. They actually do well the week that I sell them. And against Man United at home, right? Crystal Palace tend to do quite well against Man United. I wouldn't be the most outrageous thing in the world for either Dean Henderson to make a load of saves and get some points or for Crystal Palace to keep a clean sheet and Dean Henderson to make a load of saves, particularly considering Man United is his old club. Could be written for him to have a good game there. The one player I really need to get rid of, I think, is Guardiola. You know, he's got Arsenal at home coming up. Given how well, well, poorly they've played defensively in terms of, I think they played quite well defensively, but just have conceded goals regardless. I think they'll concede against Arsenal. And given there's Champions League going on, I just I don't want to keep Guardiola. So I'll be looking to get rid of him. And my potential replacement for Guardiola, well, there's a little hint as to who Arsenal are looking at there. My potential replacement for Guardiola is one of Trent or Robertson. Just looking at their stats, Trent is just absolutely night and day better than Robertson. You can see there 0.59 expected returns per 90, even though he hasn't actually got an attacking return yet. But that is better than quite a lot of midfielders that are in and around his price point. And he's a defender that can also get points for clean sheets. So, I mean, yeah, I think he looks absolutely brilliant. Yes, the Champions League is mixed in there. So I think I'd be hesitant to make an early transfer here because... You'd want to see how they line up in the Champions League. Hopefully they don't get any injuries. I just think making early transfers for players that play in the Champions League midweek is too risky. And ultimately, if I just go back to my team, the way it is laid out at the moment, I don't have anything in the bank. So I would kind of just have to go straight from Guardiola to Robertson, who I don't think is as good as Trent, but I think is probably worth £6 million. I mean, the attacking stats, he's basically got half of the, the expected returns per 90 that Trent has made. Well, less than that, even basically a third. So there's a big gulf between, you know, their potential attacking output. But I think I just have to go with Robertson. <laughs> like I said, I've been bigging up Trent because I think he's the best defender in the game by far. I just can't quite afford him. Um, and looking at the rest of the team, I don't see a way that I can fund it either. Another player I'd be looking to get rid of potentially, just because he's been a little bit disappointing so far this season, is Anthony Gordon. I, I sort of teased who I was going to bring in already. And that's Mbumo, who is 7.1 million. So by dropping Gordon to Mbumo, I would unfortunately only free up 0.3 million. But I do think Mbumo is a far better option than Gordon is, even, yeah, even with that small price difference. Now, the fact that he's on penalties and free kicks for Brentford, I think, well, obviously Gordon isn't that for, for Newcastle. And the fixtures for Brentford are just so good for the next sort of seven or eight game weeks. Tottenham away in game week five is, I think, a good fixture. Like Tottenham are not the best team in the world defensively at all. So I think he could potentially score against them. And then it's West Ham, Wolves, Man United, Ipswich, Fulham, Bournemouth, Everton, Leicester. Like, those are great games. And genuinely, I could see Brentford and Mbumo scoring in all of those upcoming games. So yeah, I think I will probably do, looking at my team, Guardiola to Robertson, Gordon to Mbumo, and that's two of my three free transfers used, and it should free up 0.3 million in the bank. And then the one other player, well, there's two really, isn't there? There's Isaac's potential injury, and then Dean Henderson as well, who I might potentially have to deal with. Dean Henderson, on the same token as talking about Mbumo, Obviously, Flecken has the same fixtures that Mbumo does. I'm looking at Flecken as a potential replacement for Dean Henderson, although a little bit reluctantly, because like I said, I've never really had any luck with changing goalkeepers in FPL. I always find that at the start of the season, I actually tend to pick one of the best goalkeepers in the game, and then they get off to a relatively slow start. I get disappointed in them, sell them, and ultimately that goalkeeper then ends up doing really well in the subsequent games after I sell him. I think that's happened in the last three or four seasons. So I'm just bearing those lessons learned in mind. But I think Flecken, you know, numbers-wise so far and fixtures coming up, I think looks to be the best goalkeeper in FPL right now. I say that and he's made four starts and hasn't kept a clean sheet yet. But my thoughts, my thoughts on goalkeepers in FPL, and I say this kind of every time I talk about goalkeepers, the best goalkeepers in fantasy football are ones that keep like an average amount of clean sheets, but make saves, get saves bonus every game. And Flecken is averaging 5.53 saves per 90. If you round that up, that is maximum saves bonus every game. That's six saves per game, maximum saves bonus points you can get. And he's averaging that per 90 minutes, right? Tottenham away up next. 
Might not be a clean sheet there, but there will definitely be saves bonus. And then looking at all of those fixtures coming up from 6 to 13, it's a really nice run of fixtures, I think, for both clean sheets and potential for saves bonus as well. So not necessarily saying I'm, I'm definitely going to do it, but looking at Henderson to Flecken, I think, is a, a sensible goalkeeper move if I was that way inclined. And then I've got the problem of Izak. Now, I don't think he's going to be out for Game Week 5. We'll find out in the press conferences as we go, and there'll probably be some leaks in the press, etc., to, to see what happens there. Bearing in mind, if I was to get rid of him, I would have to replace him for someone of the same price, so 8.4 million or cheaper, because I'd only really have an extra 0.3 hanging around in the bank. So, for example, I couldn't get Ollie Watkins, who, if I could afford him, I think that would be a nice transfer. And I'm looking at this list of strikers, right? And forgive me for being a bit pessimistic, but I don't see anyone that I desperately want to get in my team. The only one I was keen on was Wissa. I spoke about him in, in previous videos last week. And I think I was kind of justified in my pick. I remember saying that he was better, in my opinion, than Jao Pedro because his minutes were going to be better. And I was kind of proved right immediately because Jao Pedro didn't play. And obviously, Wissa did. But unfortunately, he picked up an ankle injury in that Man City game. And it didn't look too serious, but I wouldn't be surprised if he missed a couple of weeks. And I just don't think you can justify bringing him in now for, for game week five. But other than Wissa, there is just no one on this list. I've already got Solanke. There is just no one on this list that really makes me want to buy them. Like Chris Wood, he just doesn't fill me with excitement. Havertz has got Man City next. And with Odegaard being out, I just don't trust how, how, how he's going to play in that sort of number nine position going forwards. Jal Pedro didn't play in game week four. Nicholas Jackson, can you really rely on him? Mateta, potentially. He did take the penalty, to be fair, for Crystal Palace, so could be a decent option. He's probably... I would say he's probably the only one, bar Wissa, who was obviously injured. Mateta is probably the only one that I would really consider selling Izak for. And Calvert-Lewin, he's been in good form so far, but he's so injury prone. I think it's only a matter of time before he's out for a long period of time. It's just the way he is as a player. Cunha could be decent, but I haven't seen enough from him yet this season. Same with Nketiah. And Danny Welbeck is just as injury prone as Calvert-Lewin, really. And Brighton have just got so many options in those positions to rotate. So... Yeah, Isaac's a tough one. I, like I said, I think he's probably going to be fit for game week five, so we don't really have to worry about him. You know, Given it was sort of a nosebleed that they couldn't fix, I'm, I'm sure he'll be okay. He might have to play with a face mask, etc. But yeah, I don't think he'll be an issue, which is good because if he is and I have to get rid of him, I'm not seeing a whole lot of excitement amongst other positions here. Just going back to my team, I guess the one thing I could potentially do if he is out is maybe go to a 3-5-2, maybe drop Izak to a 4.5, just Deadwood striker, and then potentially upgrade Harry Winks to someone else. But that in itself costs two transfers. So yeah, it's just it's just really hard to work out what I'm going to do. I guess I could potentially do Izak to maybe Cannon of Ipswich, and then Winks to Mbumo, and then also do Guardiola to Robertson. But that would be fully using all of my free transfers. And yeah, I don't know. I'm just rambling basically about what I could do with my team. That's kind of a, my thoughts really at the moment. So the three sort of four players I'd be looking to get rid of, Dean Henderson, Guardiol, Gordon, and maybe Izak if he is injured. And those are the kind of replacements I'm lining up. So let's we'll go through it again. Flecken could potentially come in for Dean Henderson. I would really like Trent, but I just don't think I can afford him. So Robertson, actually, that's a good point. I'm just thinking live actually. I should go back to my team. If I did, Isaac to Cannon, Gordon, oh sorry, Winks to Mbumo, that might leave me with enough cash to do Guardiol to uh, Trent rather than Robertson. So that could potentially be something I do. I'm kind of just going live with things at the moment with my thoughts because that's kind of what a transfer plans video is in my mind. So yeah, I could potentially get Trent in instead of Guardiol, which I do think is better than Robertson. I also think the benefit you get with Trent is that the backup option for him, I don't know, I because they both have Bradley and Simicass in the wings as well. I was about to say that, that Simicass is kind of an easy backup for Robertson, whereas Trent doesn't really have any coverage, but obviously Connor Bradley can come in for Trent. So I don't think that's a valid point. I do definitely think Trent is better than Robertson though, so that's something to consider, I guess. Maybe a change in formation and bringing Trent in. I, I want to get some Liverpool defence, basically. Even though they lost 1-0 and conceded at home to Anfield to Nottingham Forest, 
I still think Liverpool are, are going to be good defensively this season. They've proven that with three clean sheets from four games, right? And Bumo, I think he's definitely going to come in, whether that's for Harry Winks and I change the formation or, or getting rid of Gordon. And then Isaac, I mean, yeah. It's just the question is, I guess, is Isaac worth replacing even if he isn't injured? And is he more important to replace than Anthony Gordon? I I guess it'll all play out over the week, right? The thing that I think I just and just prefer Isaac to Gordon because he's on penalties, whereas Gordon isn't. And he's also playing in his favoured position. Where at the moment for, for Newcastle, Gordon's kind of on the right and Harvey Barnes is kind of forcing him out there with Harvey Barnes playing so well at the moment. It's meaning that Gordon isn't really playing in his best position, which isn't helping him in terms of his returns. So when well, I'm thinking of like, as long as Isaac is fit in terms of like priorities of players to replace, I think Gordon should be on the chopping block before Isaac is. So yeah, maybe we're looking at Guardiola out and Gordon out for Robertson and Mbumo, but I am open to Guardiola for Trent. Uh, what was I saying? Winks for Mbumo and Isaac for Cannon, maybe, and then just having a dead spot on the bench. Maybe that's something I could do. I haven't even spoken about my bench players here, by the way. Go uh, not Gordon. Johnson and Hall, who both are pretty poor options now. I think I'm just going to have to roll with them in my team and just keep them until our wildcard, to be honest. Not ideal, but yeah. That's kind of where I'm at with my team at the moment. A bit of a ramble with this video, but that's kind of where I want to be with transfer plans. Just sort of talking live about my team and my thought process behind players I want to pick using all the data and kind of experience that I've accumulated this season. So yeah, that's kind of my plans with my team. All right, and that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed that. Like I said, a little bit more rambly than usual, but I'm kind of thinking live about what I'm going to do with my team, to be honest. And I'm hoping that kind of live, honest thought process is useful in the video. Um, yeah, hope you enjoyed it, found it useful. If you did, please leave me a like rating. Let me know in the comments what you think I should do with my team, whether I'm on the right lines in your opinion or not. And yeah, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video and want to see more from me, you can subscribe to the Golden Gold channel. It should be just there on your screen. Thank you very much for watching and I will catch you in my next video.